What's going on guys, Seth here for Tasty Loot Gaming reacting to Inside Xbox April 2020 live show featuring Grounded, Gears Tactics, and more. Uh, this came out yesterday. Uh, something else also got announced yesterday that I will be covering later today, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, a couple quick reminders though that um, we are in April, as this says, so make sure to download um, Dirt Rally 2.0 and Uncharted 4 both offer for free on PlayStation Plus. Make sure to download those, play those, come back at the end of the month for uh, Plus Club. Let us know if you thought of those games. Let you know we thought of them. And our game of the month, randomly picked, is Jurassic World Evolution, which is an isometric, top-down, park simulator. I was about to say ARPG. That'd be cool if it was. Uh, make sure to play that as well and come back, and we'll talk about that as well. Also, make sure to type in Ask uh, TLG, hashtag AskTLG on your comments if you want to be considered uh, for TastyCast we do a uh, segment where we read you guys comments and we reply to them so if you want that to happen to you um, it, it just might it just might happen to you uh, we have a Discord link down below, you can talk to us anytime all time and we're on iTunes, Spotify, and other podcast platforms if you prefer to listen to us so uh, Xbox had an event yesterday and I was dying to hear about it or even watch it, which I'm going to do today. So, um, yeah, we're going to go through that. Um, Sony also had an announcement yesterday. I will cover that in a separate video. I was going to do it in the same video, but I don't want to... I'd rather have the conversation about Xbox in this video and have the conversation about Sony, PlayStation, PlayStation 5, blah, 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 in a different video, just so I can navigate those waters a bit better than what I'm seeing on Twitter right now, where... Anytime anything gets announced for either thing, the the first uh, thing you're going to see is people talking about how that compares to the other, um, which sucks because I'm buying both of these. And obviously, I know everybody's not going to be able to do the same thing, especially like right when they come out. But um, it just sucks. It's just boring to see people not look at the information they're getting and their first reaction uh, to be... Oh, this is awesome, or ah, I'm not really into it. But to go, well, Sony did it better, or Sony fucking sucks. This is the best. Um, so, and I've talked about the console war stuff before, but some people are just ridiculous about it. I like some healthy competition. Um, I actually kind of rooted on. I know it's kind of shitty, but uh, I'm just like, ooh, shit. What are they gonna bring? Ooh, what are they gonna bring? What are they gonna bring? I like the competition of, of it. I like both companies. I like all the companies, uh, bringing out new stuff, but. The people who are just like instantly negative and they see like a brand new controller from either of these companies and they're like, well, the fucking other one's better. Or, this one's fucking better than the other one. That one fucking sucks. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, dude. Chill. Chill the fuck out. It's just plastic. It's just plastic you can fucking buy. That's it. A company puts a plastic in a certain shape and you can like it or dislike it, but some people are acting like fucking... They're on a goddamn um, a crusade for Sony or fucking Microsoft. Like, they got fucking their pitchforks and fucking torches, and they're ready to go kill the other fucking team. It's, whew, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's just fucking, it's just plastic with wires in it, dude. Chill. Anyway, that aside, uh, I'm going to be watching this in its entirety. I'm going to be reacting to it. Um, Xbox did show off uh, their controller. Um, yesterday, and uh, I don't know if it's in this Inside Xbox. If it's not, I'll cover that independently on this same episode. So, without all this uh, slight ranting, uh, let's just jump into this, guys. That's you guys. Hey, everyone. Phil Spencer. I wanted to take this moment just to uh, my best wishes out to everybody. Washington. Hope you Homie and your lives near me. are healthy and safe. We're all living in extraordinary times uh, right now and making the best of it. We're all in it together. Uh, and I'm really proud of the way that you're doing it. Wash your hands, up, guys. Play such an important uh, part of so many people's lives right now. Uh, here we are with an inside Xbox show put together in a way that we've never done before. Uh, Responsibly? Our team, and thanks to all those people, are working remotely to put together uh, a great show for you. Um, our studios and our third-party partners are also working remotely, um, but it was really important for us to get an inside Xbox together because I think right now we could all use a little bit of entertainment uh, and see it is, some of the stuff that's coming in games. It is amazing that we have always had 
not always, but for a while now. This none of this is new. We've had the technology to do this stuff independently for so long. Like you can orchestrate all sorts of uh, events, conversations, videos over the internet, and we've, we're so used to how it used to be done that in a time where we have to do it this way, it's just so easy to do. Like homeboy sitting at home. Everyone else who's working on this project probably sitting at home, and we're still getting something uh, that's, that's going to be able to show off all the stuff that we need to know. So not that I necessarily enjoy the aesthetic of this. It's needed. This needs to happen. But uh, it's just it's just awesome to see that in a time where people need to be staying home, so many people like myself. I'm obviously I'm not in the same boat as fucking Phil Spencer, but I'm able to conduct stuff that's entertaining for people. I hope uh, from my fucking room, uh, just like Phil Spencer is able to conduct an event showing off stuff that's coming out for his uh, fucking console from his house like it's just it's just crazy how like all the people who are at home right now they're like ah, i'm bored i get it i feel you and i wish it didn't have to be this way but at the same time we're living in the best time ever on this fucking planet to have to stay home it's just it's just crazy sorry quick quick thing so this is the best that we have right now uh, a lot of uncertainty in the world you might You're see doing great phil in the show uh, but we thought it was an important doing great. thing for us to get out, so we wanted wanted to go do that, and we're really excited about it. We'll be right along with you watching it, because uh, we just uh, love what we get to go do. So I really do, uh, and hope you enjoy the show. Here you go. Every time I frame myself up when I shoot in my room, there's a thing of lotion back there. I've been waiting for fucking Wade to say something about, because he seems like the type of guy who would say something about it. I swear. I swear my hands are dry from washing them so much. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. I swear, Wade. Hey, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Inside Xbox. That's right. Like so many of you, we are working Graham or Graham? myself, Katarina, Malik, and of course, Larry. I mean, we're not all working from the same home. We are practicing social distancing. This is going to be pretty fun, right? They're roommates, all four of them. Houses. I'm glad I did the tidying up earlier. But we've all got kind of different internet connections. But all we these are motherfuckers not are let rich. Spotty Wi-Fi get in the way of a great show for you. We've got tons of good stuff coming up. But let's start right now uh, with a game we announced at XO19, Obsidian's Grounded. And since the announce, we know that the fans have been looking forward to more information on the storyline. Is this the Bugs the Life one? Player. So people keep in. talking about everybody's like Obsidian's making a Bugs Life game yep oh good you are not dead oh shit look at that guy I will be helping you out today first things first I'm already into it supposed to be here secondly you the honey I shrunk the kid shit very 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 small please refrain from panicking the machine that could return you to your normal size is currently out of order. You're hunt that boy? Girl? Everything in this thing? Wants to, Person? Uh, eat you. Bug? Again, your tiny panic will accomplish nothing. You are going Got anxiety to right now. To survive out here. I would recommend building a base. Maybe a simple shelter of some sort. Oh no, this is fucking cool. Probably need some weapons. But you should be fine. Unless you get eaten. You'll either be fine or you will be dead. It's really up to you. That reminds me of obsidian. Okay, so this is obviously some kind of survival game, which is pretty cool, but I love that it, they're trying something different with the whole being shrunk thing, which is something I feel like a lot of people haven't even really touched on a whole lot in general. Oh. And you might come across some strange things while looking around. I'm not sure who put them here or what they want. I used to really but like I Minecraft. I, I don't it dislike it now, but I don't play it anymore. But fucking uh, Ark, uh, I really like Conan um, a lot. So this kind of genre is something I really am into. So I like the creative aspect, but I also like the really well action aspect. For creating awesome storylines. So at least they're trying something different, which is not weird for Obsidian. 
And with Grounded, we want to expand on how we tell stories. So I've always wanted to make a survival game. And one thing that we're doing with Grounded is playing a lot of survival games and looking at the genre as a whole to see where we can improve. First, we have environmental storytelling. So we want to tell the story through the places that you're visiting and do it through the, the artwork and the, the atmosphere of the, the areas that you're exploring. It's all handcrafted. We spend a lot of time talking about the tiny little details of why is this thing in the yard in the first place? Who put it here? Depending on the materials that the things are made out of, how they're placed, what's the purpose of this thing? We want to make all these details where it's actually a place that feels lived in and it feels alive. First things first, you're not supposed to be here. So in the trailer, you've heard a voice, and that's our, our robot buddy, Burgle. Burgle is your buddy and your pal, and he guides you through the adventure, and he's also just the NPC that you can talk to if you get lost, if you need some help. That's You'll cool. Fine, it's good to have a buddy. Dead. It's really up to you. In the trailer, you notice that we do hint at that there's something else going on in the yard. And we do have a secrets and layers to discover. So there is some uh, uh, evil force in the yard and you'll discover who they are and what they're up to throughout the story and the adventure. In Grounded, not only can you play in multiplayer and it's a great multiplayer experience, but you can also cool. play in single player. We want to support all Love it. types of players. Love so it. If you want to be the, the player who crafts armor and armors up and goes through the, the adventure, you can do that. If you want to play a stealthy player, you can do that. If you want to just go destroy everything and build up a, a arsenal of weaponry. I saw a lot of people on Twitter talking well. shit about this. I don't, I don't know. I like it. I think it's cool. I mean, it's cartoony really looking, but it gives a fuck. Is that this is just the start of the journey. So when we launch in game preview, the storyline's not going to be finished. I have tons of ideas. I know the team has tons of ideas. I'm sure the community will have tons of ideas on how to make this game the best game that it can possibly be. Those guys went to E3, so that, that poster you had on the wall. I got a fucking thing of like eight about, of those posters, we'll different types. We'll work with you and work with the community to see where the storyline goes from here. Cool, I'm into it. I think it's cool. All right, great stuff. And if you're hungry for more Grounded, the team will be on right after Inside Xbox with a gameplay live stream. So don't miss that. But first, for the rest of Inside Xbox, we've got a ton of good stuff for you. We've got five badass things you need to know about Gears Tactics. We've got a ton of great new additions to Xbox Game Pass for PC and for console. The Jiggle we've got Billies. The debut of Sea of Thieves April update. Uh, okay, I already saw Sea of Thieves has cats coming out, new which is fucking dope. And lots more as well. But right now, I was skeptical on the monkeys, and then I got one, and I was like, this is cool. Of Xbox Series X. Joining us today is Jason Ronald, who's the Director of Program Management for Xbox Series X. Jason, great to see you. Great to see you too, Larry. Now, we had a lot of news recently about Xbox Series X. Um, we talked about a lot of different things. Can you kind of go over quickly what they were? Sure. So it was an exciting time because we finally revealed the full technical specifications of the Xbox Series X and provided insight into some of the- It looks like he was locked in a vault for four fucking years game. working on this Xbox thing. Xbox Series X is our fastest, most powerful console ever, powered by our custom designed processor built in partnership with AMD, leveraging the latest RDNA 2 and Zen 2 architectures Mm -hmm. And we really designed the system to deliver consistent, sustained performance never seen before in a game console. And we really designed it to have the optimal speed uh, balance oh my of God. power and speed in console design. And it's ultimately about enabling transformative gaming experiences you've never seen before in the living room. Now we heard about things like ray tracing and variable rate shading. What does that mean for gamers? So ray tracing has always been the holy grail of computer graphics. Um, but we've never had the power to actually do it in real time. So we added a custom hardware to be able to do hardware accelerated DirectX ray tracing, which is really about delivering higher fidelity visuals, more immersive environments, things like better lighting, shadows, mm -hmm. reflections off water and glass. And you can use the exact same techniques for 3D spatial audio so that you get a much more immersive experience. You mentioned variable rate shading. Variable rate shading is really about delivering 
new levels of performance and efficiency to developers so that they can go well beyond the raw power of the box itself uh, because they can be more precise about where they choose to spend uh, graphics power in different parts of the scene without reducing the overall visual quality. And then on the audio side, we developed a custom hardware audio block so that we could actually offload that work from the CPU. And that means that you're gonna get a much richer audio experience, but because we've offloaded it from the CPU, that means you're gonna have more complex AI, better animation, more denser, richer worlds. Then you look at something like Quick Resume. Quick Resume is actually built on top of the Xbox Velocity. So you can play eight games at once. Which actually just really allows players to jump in and jump out of experiences very quickly. They're releasing exactly where they baby controllers. Off. You put and, one you know, finger on each controller and you play the, the ten games. Months, it's really transformed how I actually play games. Uh, and it's just, it's such Xbox a great... Xbox baby controller. Be honest, it's really hard to go back and play games without using these new capabilities that the new hardware is enabling. All right, I've heard this thing called Xbox Velocity Architecture. What is that and, and what is it gonna mean to gamers? The Xbox Velocity Architecture is fast, really defined by four major components. First is the custom designed NVMe SSD. Uh, and it's gonna deliver levels of performance you've never seen in console gaming before. The next is we have sure. a dedicated hardware decompression block so that we can take those assets and expand them so that developers have direct access to them uh, in real time so that you get much more oh my god that's creepy world richer texture why well, talking you, know, you can hear fucking environments the game the that was being haunted called direct storage which is a brand new API that gives developers I was direct by a access to the MVME controller and then finally we have a new feature called sampler feedback streaming which actually allows developers to on-demand request data from the solid-state storage drive, and that acts as a memory multiplier. So when you think about these large open-world games like a Red Dead Redemption 2 or an Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we wanted the, the technology to fade into the background so that players just get that really rich, dynamic, immersive environment, unlike you what you've ever seen in previous generations. Jason, can you tell us a little bit more about the storage options available for Xbox Series X, including what this is? Yeah, sure. I didn't hear so, about this. So what you just I was told this was isn't real by an Xbox storage fan. expansion card for Xbox Series X that we've developed in partnership with Seagate. And that matches the internal performance exactly. And it's all about sustained performance. Okay. So if a game takes full advantage of the Xbox... Two things about this, and he's going to talk more about this, so I might be jumping the gun here. This is a glorified memory card, which is fine. I don't see a problem with uh, simplifying installing space, hard drive space, essentially. I, I think it's actually kind of neat, this idea of simplifying it. But at the same time, I don't like when companies start doing things like trying to ex sell extended stuff in a proprietary way, because typically they can sell it at a higher price for what you're getting. Uh, where you'd be getting it cheaper otherwise if you didn't do it in this way. So there's there's an opportunity to overcharge for this simplicity um, that I don't think is necessary. But I do appreciate the simplicity of it because not everybody wants to learn how to get into something and put in a new hard drive and stuff. Um, I think a better option would have been um, a section of the console that you don't have to unscrew or have minimal work to just open it up and just pull the fucking SSD out and put a new one in. But uh, it is what it is, and it might be fine. That's just my thoughts right now. Velocity architecture, that same game can live on the internal storage or can live on that external uh, expandable storage card, and you'll get the exact same performance. But at the same time, too, we know plenty of people have existing USB hard drives, um, and we want to be, make it as easy as possible. So you can easily just take the existing external hard drive that you have, unplug it from your current console, plug it into your Xbox Series X, and all your games are instantly available. Okay, to uh, I mean, that's that's good, too. You can continue too. to run all those games directly off that external drive. Because um, so I have an 8-terabyte uh, external I use for my PS4, so I'm glad they're giving you the option to for gamers who have plenty of games just plug that, that thing playing. in. Thanks, Jason. Now, I want to be super clear about what Jason just said. You can always take your Xbox One games and play them directly off your external hard drive when connected to Xbox Series X. 
Now for Xbox Series X games, you can certainly store them on your external hard drive, but when you're ready to play them, you're going to want to move them to the internal oh, SSD okay. or the Seagate. I might, I might be slow here. So games in general on external, and they can be stored there, but if you want to play them off of it, it's got to be off of that. And it's probably the same reason as what uh, Sony said recently with their proprietary SSD technology. They're saying that you will be able to use your external hard drive for um, PS4 games, but uh, for PS5 games, you're going to have to have a hard drive that can be read fast enough to essentially not stream the game, but get the info off of that fast enough for the game to be played properly. Um, they're saying that uh, when they first start working on the PS5, um, SSDs at the time weren't fast enough. It's something they had been working on. Um, and at this point, when the when the console comes out, there will be SSDs that are able to do what they wanted to do, but you're going to have to own one for PlayStation 5 games to be played off of it. So same thing here. These are designed so that they'll be able to play those those games fast enough so they're just doing it in a way that you are buying seagate microsoft xbox one terabyte memory cards essentially so that's interesting they're, they're pretty much working in the same parameters expansion drive right here it's that simple anything else you'd like to share before i let you go honestly uh, from the team we're just really excited to get this out into players hands uh later this i'm glad year. he cleared that up father you know, time was uh being a little ambiguous content. thousands of games will be available on day one uh, and we're really excited by what developers are doing right now to build new games for the Xbox Series X. So we're excited to ship it later this year. New Jason games. Director of Program Management for Xbox Series X, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Larry. I guess I'm drunk. He's at home right now. He's probably drinking. Coming up in just a little bit, we're going to give you the five things you need to know for Gears Tactics, which launches on April 28th. But first, it's time for the roundup, and there's a lot to cover. So I have my little tablet. Low key interested in Gears right, in Tactics. Great time I like tactical games. Xbox Game Studios. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is out now and launched to near universal critical acclaim, cementing a franchise that uses a great Metroidvania design with breathtaking visuals and a music score that will stir all the feels. Ninja Theory's vibrant, competitive, team based brawler Bleeding Edge also launched. I'm Anybody in the community play this? Because I really like this. And it's on Game Pass, so if you have Game Pass, you can play it. But I'd like to play with people. Because I played in the beta and I really liked it. I liked it way more than I thought I would. Pro tip work together and learn that parry mechanic. Oh, Plus, shit. State of the K2 Juggernaut Edition launched last month as well, including a massive free update with a brand new map, remastered graphics and audio and hundreds of tweaks for longtime fans Speaking and Speaking of new map, and isn't of course, the new Ori's season for Call of Duty and Bleeding Edge are all available on Xbox Game Pass for console and PC. Now, we also have big news on the Apex Legends front. Respawn and EA announced a limited time Old Ways event starring everyone's favorite all-father devotee, Bloodhound. I, Bluthunder, feel slaughter. This unique event puts a cooperative spin on the Apex recipe as you band together to defeat waves of prowlers. Included in the event are dozens of items, including 12 legendary skins. I might be just as excited about the announcement that the fan favorite duos mode is back. Permanent. That's kind of cool. Thank you, Reese. But they're doing stuff like that. Oh, and in true Apex Legends fashion, it's available right now. And now an update from our friends at Turn 10 with Forza Street. While the game has been playable on Windows 10 for some time now, we're happy to announce that the game will be coming to Android and iOS. Oh, I was like, what the fuck is Forza, Forza Street? Forza is a new and unique Forza experience designed to be played anytime, anywhere, and excite anyone interested in building out their car collection. I'm hard right now, dude. Long street races I'm excited. Ask me if I'm excited. Android users can now pre register on Google me. Play and the Samsung me. Galaxy stores so you know when the game goes live. And this is important because everyone who plays the game in the first 30 days will walk away with a 2017 Ford GT as a welcoming gift. Uh, by the way, that's in Bro, Google welcome me. Play. I'm trying to download it right now. This is not going to happen. I'm trying to get that, that Ford thing. And to make your time in a little easier to pass, Street. PS5 is free to play this week for Xbox Live Gold members on Xbox and Windows 10. And it's completely free to everyone on Steam. Coming soon, pre-register. the game during the free period, you'll get another freebie. The Dave Batista skin and Batista Bomb finishing move. And man, I would hate to be on the receiving end of one of those. 
And by the way, that's just in the game. So if anyone shows up to your house and Batista yeah, that guy you, had a that has naked Xbox. monster man on his face. And finally, as we look ahead, we can see Minecraft Dungeons on the horizon as it readies for its new release date of May 26th. Okay, I'm also kind of interested in this game. It looks kind of online and basic visually because it's Minecraft, but from a brand new perspective. I like that Microsoft is RPG is doing weird stuff with, with their Minecraft. games when it comes to genres. Don't take my word for it, though. Just take a look. Like Gears Tactics, this. It's neat. Good on Xbox. In other Minecraft news, don't forget that the team has added a new education category to the Minecraft marketplace, including free education content. The educational content lets Bro, players explore the international me. space me smart. through a partnership with NASA, learn to code with a robot, visit famous landmarks, find and build 3D fractals, learn what it's like to be a marine biologist, and so much more. All right, now onto one of my favorite parts of the show where we get to announce a bunch of great new games coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC and for console. Let's take a look. Coming soon to Xbox Game Pass for console. The satirical sci-fi space adventure Journey to the Savage Planet lands in the library on April 9th. Drop into an really? uncharted planet as a low-level new employee of Kindred Aerospace to explore, survive, Laugh I wanted to try it, but I didn't vibrant and buy it, secrets. and this is why. And coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC, if you're one of those people who knows all about the beautiful game from the comfort of your armchair, it's beautiful. time to put your reputation on the line in Football Manager 2020, where every decision counts. Also coming Not to interested. Xbox Game Pass for PC is the Watch Your Step or Die RPG Mistover. Mm, that looks kind of and the nostalgic romp brief upside down and interesting Stranger Things 3 the game. Nope. Nope. Don't care. Don't care. Don't give a single shit. At all. And coming to both Xbox Game Sorry Pass about console it. and PC, the immensely popular Ragdoll Physics meets platform puzzler Human Fall Flat is releasing DLC of a new level called Thermal. I played this, it's pretty fun. Will have you venturing from snowy peaks Although I found a vent and I pulled the you can look forward to its release in the, spring. the cover off of it and I climbed the in and there's a room and I walked into a hallway DLC that was dark and there's no launches. light in there and I kept walking and I couldn't get out. I couldn't find my way out. RPG specialists, Alvastia Chronicles. I'm not even saying it's a Join bad story or a reason I stopped Elmina playing it, which it is, but um, an attempt to restore that is just a thing that happened to me. In it just happened. Battles with up to that guy's gone forever. And we are pumped to debut the next chapter in the cult classic series, Yakuza. Yakuza Kiwami is an See, I was talking earlier about people bitching from consoles. Microsoft versus Sony, Sony versus Microsoft. When this got announced for Xbox, I saw so many fucking PlayStation people on Twitter going, Congrats, Xbox. This is a really fun series. We're glad you're getting this. And I was like, man, if only we could just get more of that. You know, I don't mind the friendly, friendly competition, man. Like, fucking, let's, let's get excited about this and shit. But the team recently added perks. Also, it's just video games, man. Just have fun. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members. Right now, on both PC and console, and brand new to perks, you can get 5,000 My Team points and 30 skill boosts from NBA 2K20, an Xbox starter bundle with credits and more for Warframe, and a monthly bonus pack for Fantasy Star Online 2. Fuck. For those who haven't grabbed them yet, you can still get an Ori inspired hull, flag, sail, and figurehead in Sea of what? Thieves, a Five God bundle pack in Smite, and three free tanks. In World of Tanks, perks indeed, and lots more to come regularly. Now, to unlock all these, simply go to the Member Benefits section inside your Xbox Game Pass app. That's on mobile, PC, or Xbox One, and you can access your perks from anywhere. Today, it's also great to be able to give a huge welcome to our friends from Japan and South Korea. Now, from April 14th, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for PC and for console will be available for the very first time in Japan. For our friends in South Korea, from April 14th, Xbox Game Pass for PC will be included for free as part of your Ultimate membership or available for standalone purchase. So welcome! Oh, and it was great to see Journey to the Savage Planet being added to Xbox Game Pass, but I'm also delighted to announce that there's some brand new DLC coming to the game. Let's have a look. Hey, friendo. Just letting you know, I've got another mission request from Kindred. Hey. 
You may have bought this planet, but we put stuff on it. So now it's ours. Ignore him. But what are Viper doing here? See what else you can dig up. I'm sending an update to Kindred. That was really weird editing. They had to go in every beat, and then they had it every two beats, and then for a split second did one, two, two, one. Oh shit, I'm gonna wear boots. Now. Sending the troops. Now we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, gears. We are going to be checking in with Tyler Billman, creative director. I just guess they're talking about like quantum mechanics or something. Out on PC like on you Apple lost PA, me. And then Xbox later this year. Welcome back, soldier. Now grab a weapon. Setting up a perimeter. I'm ready for him. I mean, it pretty much looks just like XCOM, but that's fine because Gears Tactics was developed by a small XCOM 2 was not a strategy um, game as luck. exciting it's as a single player wish campaign it would have been. That broadens the Gears of War franchise. Here Especially are five when you're badass things that you should know point about blank Gears okay, in someone's face. Listen up. And it's like 99% chance hitting this person and you miss well, it is a it's like, game. We Ooh, that happens way more than it should. We serve you a lot of enemies per encounter and we give you a free action system. So you have three actions per unit that you can use to move, shoot, or apply your skills as you want. So there's a lot of things to shoot at. In Gears Tactics, the main character is Gabe Diaz. Gabe is a reluctant leader who's found himself in the motor pool due to circumstances beyond his control, and he's pressed back into service because of the emerging monster's threat coming from underground. If the name sounds familiar, he is in fact Kate's dad, Kate being the main character from Gears 5. Just like we planned it. In Gears Tactics, Gabe is on the okay, looks like he's for an evil locust named like 34. Ukon. 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 <laughs> now, Ukon is a geneticist. Ukon, he's the Ukon, monster Ukon. that makes monsters. The corpsers and brumox, the big bosses that you see in Gears of War, that's Ukon's handiwork. Executions will keep you in the fight. Gears of War has always featured these incredible executions that you can do with the Lancer assault rifle or the National Shotgun. But in Gears Tactics, executions have a strategic value. How is that That's one way possible? to put it. If you run forward and execute an enemy, it will actually grant bonus actions to the entire squad. This means you can keep moving forward and keep your momentum. In addition, everything That's in the game cool. is I like that. There'll be no loot boxes, no microtransactions. What Good. you see, you can earn. Gears Tactics Good. is full of customization options. There are five different classes in the game, each with 30 or more skills, oh, lots shit. of combinations of things to That's find cool. as you level up. Each class has a primary weapon. Each weapon has five mod slots, so you can improve the scopes or improve the barrels. All this together creates a bunch of combinations, so you that can try to win cool. the way you want to win. I in like Gears it. Tactics, we also have a cosmetic a lot of games on here. I'm digging. System. Each soldier good. has three slots: the helmet slot, the torso slot, and the leg slot. Each can be uniquely oh. configured, so different colors and patterns and metallic finishes. So if you want to go into the fight against Ukon with multicolored leopard print pants, you can totally do that. There you have it. Five badass things about Gears Tactics. Gears Tactics went gold today. You can pre-order now to play on Steam or Windows 10, and it's included in Xbox Game Pass for PC. Watch for it on Xbox consoles later this year. Is it? Today, we're happy to announce that we are expanding xCloud to 11 new territories in Western Europe. If you're in any of the regions you see on the screen right now, I'll pick best time to be up the fucking game pass. Game streaming to register. Open and up the game pass. new games to play in the project Search twos on here now. Review today. First up is one of BioWare's finest, the epic fantasy role-playing game Dragon Age Inquisition. They don't have Next it on the front up page. is the return of Yarny in the beautiful side-scrolling platformer puzzler Unravel 2. And finally Sims 4 joins the service as well, allowing fans to live their best virtual life Gears. on the go with Project xCloud. And now for a couple of indie darlings coming to Xbox very soon. And Great for one stuff. of them, I mean really soon. 
Say, where's the grindy base? Man, Hotline Miami, I like a lot, but holy shit, it's hard to play those on console. Because I played it originally on mouse and keyboard, and just the reaction time for a lot of the scenarios is so much easier with a mouse than, than a controller. Not saying you can't do it, obviously plenty of people do it. I did it as well, but I just preferred it on mouse and keyboard. What in the... What the fuck is happening right now? Is this the new Plants vs. Zombies? This looks like um, Zombies Ate My Neighbors meets... Um, I don't know. What the fuck? Stardew Valley. Alright, so let's talk about Hell Games. They are best known for creating the this procedurally hell generated games. Like, infinite who the universe hell is that? Man's Sky, which Xbox fans continue to enjoy. But inside this small UK-based studio is an even smaller team that has been working on a passion project, which is an altogether more handcrafted, intimate, and emotional game. Here's lead designer which is Steve Burgess to take us through for the first they time even the first are doing few that. minutes of gameplay for the last campfire. Hi everyone, I'm Steven Burgess, the designer of the last Isn't there a mech they added to, and I'd like to show No Man's Sky? Xbox One exclusive of a couple of moments taken from the first minutes of the game. Our story begins in the dark, in a hopeless place, where a lost ember sleeps. This is really exciting for me actually. We've been working on this game for a few years, and it's really nice to be able to show other people what we're working on. Ooh, I like the bag boy. This is Ember. I'm just a bag boy living in a boat. Ember ran without hesitation. The wall glistened in the light. The painting glowed, reacting to Ember's presence. It showed a moment from the first Ember story. Ember just hoped it would show the way home. What you're seeing now is the narrator. She follows you through the game and fills out some of the backstory as you're travelling and reacts to your actions. It was a relief to find someone else, though the stranger was deathly still. Hopefully you can see that the world looks quite charming, but you'll feel that there's a real undercurrent of darkness. That's what we're trying to get across. It's charming, sure. Ember was too frightened to look away when they noticed a small satchel. I think... This kind of charming dark fantasy is something you don't really see that often in games. Fable. The first Fable. That was I the really last time I saw it. With Ember. It's the first time Ember's seen a skeleton. Despite that, Ember's first thought is empathy. A little touch on the shoulder to say sorry and pay respect. Sorry about it. The sorry. The felt heavy. Ember looked inside. Inside was a gold statue molded in the likeness of the first Ember. On the floor was the symbol of a campfire. We've taken a lot of different inspirations for making the game. Illustrate books and movies like The Dark Crystal or Labyrinth. Something about the door felt wrong. And we really want to tell a story that would fit in that style. And just like those stories, there's hints that as you play, this won't always be a happy tale. I like happy tales. Moments like this are down to our artist, Chris Simons. He's our entire art team. 
just one man has made all the art and animation that you can see. Damn. Put him under the bus. If they if you don't like it, it's on him. Just that guy. Now left in the dark. He's put so many beautiful little touches and moments in. I think people really enjoy just taking in all the scenery as they're wandering around. The stairway led to an unfamiliar forest. If the stories of the first ember were true, the a path the one thing that worries me about this to the doesn't worry me because Hello Sometimes Games I'm playing has been through worse. They'll be fine. But um, white box layout and I've taken it back. this reminds me of one of the guys who made Torchlight made hot. So much love. The flame I get, I get passion projects, make them. I want them. I like listen. when people make what they want to make, but at the same time, deviating. I don't know if you're going to get the so response the you want. Ahead there is a place where hope has become trapped. Because gameplay-wise, I'm looking at this, I'm like, what's the hook? We the the storytelling? Really tactile. You don't just press a button. You're pulling on a lever or tugging at the chain. The flame spoke and Ember listened. This tactile feel becomes really important and a big part of the game later on. Most games with puzzles tend to have a format of a series of increasingly difficult versions of the same puzzle. But for Campfire, we were trying to make it so that each puzzle you encounter feels new or has a unique twist. It's almost Good. like a smorgasbord of all different types of logic puzzles. Not, like here, maybe that's my big thing with this. I like the way it looks, but I'm not a big puzzle It's a welcome relief to be outside, guy. but then you kind of realize that this forest still might not be safe. And I think they're just understanding that this place they're trapped in is a dangerous one and they might never escape. Finding and rekindling hope is actually one of the big themes at the heart of the game. And learning to appreciate just how fragile that hope can be. As the forlorn ember awoke, the I just realized you guys might have got echo in this uh, video, which I well, apologize for. Thanks for watching, for. and I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek. Because I have this fucking shit off the side because I hate, next, I hate having headphones on. New Xbox game bar features. But I know first, you might be we want to highlight the some features that will help you take the most out of your Xbox One console. And if you're a parent, we want to ensure you feel comfortable with how much your kids are playing. I'm a millennial. As well we just as decided what kind not of to have kids. They have access to. Sorry. So here are five highlights of great features you have available now. First up is Copilot, which allows two different controllers to act as if they are one controller. This can help benefit newer players that are just getting comfortable playing games, players that require a unique configuration to play, or just to simply add a cooperative approach to any game. You That's can enable co-pilot by heading to settings, ease of access. I would say is that, is that for like a parent that's like playing co-op game with their kid and their kid, or the kid's gonna play something and maybe they wanna just, here, let me do it for you real quick or whatever. But then at the same time, there's a bunch of applications you could do that with. Or even if you were playing the same game and you wanted to like fuck around with your friend and go, let's play Halo with two controllers. Are comfortable with how their Xbox One is set up. Oh, you could cheat in that These way too. Include screen time management, what if you had a bud mash settings, and two of your <laughs> much more. Simply go to settings, accounts, and then family settings to get started. Next, we have looking for group, which allows you or if to your friends like really good at fighting games, but they're off screen. Play. And you're Let's like, yeah, I'll you kick your ass, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, no let's problem. go. And then fucking someone else off screen. And you can create or look at LFG posts right there under the multiplayer tab. Dude, what are my Next neighbors fucking doing? Sounds like goddamn like Xbox, the old war is going on over there. Game Pass. If you're feeling generous, you can add it since like 8 a.m. Motherfuckers. And then send directly to either a gamer tag or someone's email address. And finally, okay. don't forget you can play music in the background on Xbox One. Even There's one thing the game. that I will give it's Xbox like Pandora, when we're talking consoles you can simply that launch trumps the fucking the music you want to play and PlayStation. Move on to anything just destroys them. You can, you can gift people shit. Sony, get on this shit. I fucking hate that you can't gift people shit on, on PlayStation. In just a moment, we're going to get an update on Sea of Thieves' new April update. But they're also late on the name change news, thing, and they're like, well, I might fuck up your games if you want to try it. And I'm like, well, I'm not gonna, because that sounds like shit. That PC gamers commonly use right into the overlay, which means you don't have to run those apps separately anymore, unless you want to. What does that mean for you? With XSplit integration, for example, you can control your stream right from the Xbox game bar, including starting and stopping your stream. That's cool. 
interacting with chat and do like on windows just yeah the windows key and fucking g you record stuff i do it for the channel sometimes when i need footage although it records in my resolution so i have ultra wide and so you'll see sometimes in uh, like game of the month or something at the top corner it's like fucking taking over the the top corner quite a bit resources on your pc but uh, these are just a couple of examples i like the simple the integration and xsplit integration for all the details be sure to head to xbox wire for more information We'll continue building on these partnerships. I like also just having Xbox that one fucking functionality in the button to come. that does everything. Now, I guess on console it's like that too. I don't know how to stream or record show on Xbox because the time I flipped Insider for it, I, I didn't find it. Um, I'm sure it's super We've easy. I still use my Xbox Light for over two years now. Can you believe that? Is that it? Yeah, the team at Rare have poured all of their heart, their soul, their passion in it building out this great pirate adventure. Is that a PS4 back, back there? What? what is that? There's still so much more on the horizon. Sharpen your cutlass and get ready for battle with Sea of Thieves and Damn. our next monthly update, Ships of Fortune. He capped that boy. The trading companies of the Sea of Thieves want you to join their cause by signing up to become an emissary. Working on their behalf will see you rewarded with exclusive cosmetics. Cool. Help you to progress in the newly expanded reputation. There's my pirate crew. Let's do this shit. You can join any of the existing trading companies as well as the newly established Reaper's Bones. This sinister lot are all about battle and bloodshed and would like nothing more than for you to burn the other emissaries to the ground. Oh no. It's gonna make Peely more aggressive. And in the arena, our explosive competitive mode, we've overhauled your matches to make them even more action-packed. The old treasure maps are gone, now replaced by a single chest marked by a sea dog beacon. With only one cash in location, you'll have to battle hard to secure victory. And there's no time to waste either, with each contest now slashed from 24 to 15 minutes. Whether you're hmm. fighting for glory in the arena, Streamlining. or battling for loot and adventure, if you find yourself on the wrong end of a blunderbuss, your crew will now have a brief window to revive you and bring you back into the fight. And that's not all. Over in the Pirate Emporium, we've got fancy new emotes. A stunning Saberwolf inspired ship set. And the introduction of cats. Oh yeah. These furry That's what I'm here for. Will follow you in adventures across the seas. You know, except for when they're sleeping. Cats are like I was really impressed with the amount of things so that the monkey can do. I thought it was just gonna be like a pet like in any game ever in the existence of everything fortune. ever. Where it's just like a character model next to you and you go running and it just follows you. Which is fine. Hey I'd be down with that. Journey, I like that. But I like that that you can interact with it. You can like the, walk all over your ship and do um, stuff. It's really cool. Is my back garden in a, in a beautiful English spring. First of all, really cool to just be able to show you the latest content update, Ships of Fortune. Really excited about how that's just going to just dynamically change the way the whole sandbox plays in Sea of Thieves. And we've recently yeah, celebrated back our two-year anniversary. Up his mom. To Ooh, Thieves, sick burn! For us. Sick burn, got him. Such a journey going on since the kind of 2018 launch and all the updates we've released and the amazing community that we've built so thanks to everybody for for coming on this adventure with us and there's so much more to come uh and recently you may have heard also we announced that we're coming to steam really excited to bring sea of thieves to an audience and it will be cross play so That's everyone's cool. playing together in That's the same cool. world really wanted to keep that community together and kind of break down barriers so so everyone can play together so super excited about that and there's one final Get thing that community that I'm not bigger to tell you. it's a big secret uh, but really excited no to... no 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 what do you mean what do you mean no oh come on don't That's be a... no, no, no. Well, that threw me off. Typical Joe. But hey, great to know, as always, that there's some major things on the horizon for Sea of Thieves. Right, everyone, I am done. The music makes you want to play Sea of so Thieves right now. Thank you for joining me from my home. It's been a pleasure. I hope you all stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll hand over to Larry to wrap things up. See ya. All right, that's Larry, wrap it up. up. For us here at Inside Xbox, wrap it up. But don't go away. Wrap Coming this up shit up, Larry. Extended live Larry. Look, at ground Larry from obsidian and you're not wrapping it up Let's keep your eyes trained right here Larry now whether in the studio or we are home vigorously washing our hands all of us at inside Xbox not too much though man my shit's fucked up man I, I, I fucking fun ahead thanks so much for watching Goodbye. I uh I've been washing them too much <sighs> all right that was the inside Xbox April 2020 live show real quickly because I got another episode I got to roll out today um, I like what I saw. Uh, almost every game here I was really into. 
uh, a lot more than I thought I would be. Why is this being a, a there we go. Um, grounded is surprisingly way cooler than I thought it was going to be. A lot of people are like, well, it's a bog's life. Um, I like survival games and that they're doing something different and, uh, you know, on, on point with Obsidian with, with it being kind of weird and quirky um, is really cool. Um, I definitely want to try this when it comes out. I will try it out. And, um, you know, it's not super high hype for me, but when it's out, I'll, I'll make it a priority to play it. Um, I like that it's co-op too. That's huge. That's, uh, you know, I would try this regardless, but with co-op, it's a must play for me, uh, which is kind of crazy. Uh, the stuff we heard about Xbox, very cool stuff. We already knew, but it's kind of clarified it a bit, which is cool. I also got clarified, uh, to me personally about that, uh, one terabyte stick, uh, which is fine, but I already expressed my concerns with proprietary, uh, tech that you have to buy later on. Um, Apex, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care. That's not Xbox news. That's just Apex news. Um, but it's it's still neat. Uh, Gears Tactics, man. I'm not a Gears guy. You know, aesthetically it doesn't do anything for me. Storyline wise, I don't really follow it. I love tactical games though, and I like that this has um, a cool system of when you kill people in like rip and tear, fucking glory kill fashion. It uh it, it it's it is a tactical thing. It's not just like oh you can do it. It's cool looking. I like that it actually uh, helps your team. I love no microtransactions. That's nice to hear. And uh, that they said was like 32 skills per person or whatever with like five attachments per weapon. Uh, sounds awesome. That sounds like an awesome tactical game for me to want to play. Um, I almost called this Hob. Uh, what was it called? Oh no. Last Campfire. Looks interesting. Not really my style, but I would definitely give it a try. Specifically, if, if anyone in my community uh, were to recommend it to me, um, you know, I would definitely go out of my way to check it out and uh this whole xsplit thing with xbox very cool very happy to see that or the will of wisps wisps i gotta try and then sea of thieves um i've been looking for a reason to hop back in anyway and this shit sounds awesome i like that they update sea of thieves semi-regularly like i uh i'm always like this game needs more this game needs more i don't mean that as if the game doesn't have anything at this point i just i like the experience so much i just want i just want a fucking plethora of shit to do in it and they keep adding stuff so um you know I, i'd like to see new types of activities to do possibly um these are technically activities but like something new mechanically if you know what i'm saying um but other than that um i love that there's more things to unlock that's kind of the point of this game the social aspect that's the that's the fun factor of it but then having different ways to express yourself uh with your friends um is is awesome it's it's kind of the the bread and butter of sea of thieves outside of the awesome ship combat and uh mechanics of you know sailing the the high seas that no other games really nailed the same way so uh all in all i think this is a really good presentation um and uh i liked it i liked it um so we did not get a thing on the controller in this which i thought we were gonna so i'm gonna cover that real fast just so it's out of the way um, so Xbox has showed off their, uh, controller. I want to make sure this is framed up correctly. So you guys see what I'm seeing. It's all the words are on the screen. Yep. Perfect. Okay, cool. So, uh, this is the Xbox series X making games best controller, even better. Um, says with each generation of controllers from Xbox, to Xbox 360 to Xbox one, to Xbox one S the Xbox hardware team has led uh, an innovative input for gaming. Um, with the Xbox 360 controller, they absolutely did too, because that controller was like revolutionary when it came out. Um, I remember reading about the amount of like ergonomics and stuff that they had this like had these specialists come in and work on just to make like the perfect controller. And uh, I do think most people would agree the Xbox 360 controller and all the controllers that have come from that design. Um, really kind of set the way of where controllers have gone. So, um, sorry, I just went on a thing thinking about 
Xbox's legacy in, in making great controllers. Uh, the set new bars with elite and adaptive controllers and performance features, quality, and accessibility when considering the next generation of gaming they wanted to build on this legacy. At its core, Xbox Series X is all about speed, compatibility, cross generations, and the power to create deeper experiences. The team wanted to develop a controller that helps fully realize these promises, keeping in mind that even improvements that may seem small initially can make a big impact. At the same time, given the love fans have for the current controller, they wanted to ensure that it didn't change things just for the sake of change, building on the Xbox One controller's smart, evolutionary ways while ensuring the muscle memory players have built up over the years remains intact. <sighs> I, re I read so much better when the words are right in front of me. If you guys watch regularly, when we shoot out on the set, my laptop is kind of to my left, and it's a smaller screen, so I'm like looking over there trying to read and shit, and at the angle it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more rough. With those principles in mind, the Xbox design team developed a next-generation controller to deliver what fans wanted most, improved ergonomics for a wider range of people, better cross-device connectivity, easier sharing, and reduced latency. We had a chance to sit down recently with Ryan Whitaker, senior designer at Xbox, to talk about the team's philosophy in designing the new Xbox wireless controller that will be included with the Xbox Series X this holiday. Uh, Xbox Wire, what did... Uh, what, did you make design choices with new wireless controller to be more inclusive of all players? Yes, being more inclusive is part of the design process from the very beginning. That's true for everything we make at Xbox. Whether we're redesigning our standard controller or inventing a completely new one, like the adaptive controller, we ask ourselves, and gamers, how can we make gaming better experience for everyone? Uh, I don't want to go into all the jargon. Let's see. Uh, what sort of specific game or design changes did you make uh, to reach that goal? Uh, one key area we're improving is fitting a wider range of hand sizes, especially smaller hands, by accommodating hands. That The recent Xbox controllers are all way smaller than they used to be. They're fine. Um, eight-year-old, eight-year-old hands, we found we could improve accessibility and comfort for hundreds of millions of more people without uh, negatively affecting the experience with those with larger hands. Uh, it's very interesting to have to think about that to, to design this. We did that by rounding the bumpers, slightly reducing the round and rounding parts around the triggers and carefully sculpting the grips. Uh, why did you decide to change the design of the D-pad? Which I am seeing is very different looking, but I actually kind of like it. It looks a little more... Um, it looks like it's going to be more precise while also being rounded off so you're not fucking your thumbs up like we did back in the old days when I had to walk to school five miles in the snow. The new D-pad is about boosting performance and accessibility for all the ways people play, and it's one of my favorite parts of the new design. When looking at the wide range of game genres and personal play styles today, the D-pad is used in a lot of different ways. That's why our Elite controllers have swapped D-pads for some games having crisp cardinal, cardinal directions up, down, left, right. Those are directions. With well-defined edges uh, is... With well-defined edges is what gamers need. Hmm. Uh, the cross is great for that. Um, some gamers need to hit accurate diagonals or sweep actions. Uh, perform sweep, sweep actions. Which is where the faceted dish is designed to excel. And, of course, based on personal play styles, some people just prefer one over the other. I do think that this D-pad looks like an improvement it reminds me of the elite controller a bit but you know plastic and well i think the other one's plastic too i don't know but uh you know not not as premium looking but they took a note from it building on what we learned from elite and watching how people use the d-pad uh we designed a hybrid to deliver the best of both it feels great uh, the slightly deeper dish gives your thumb a little nice home to sit in. The angles are finely tuned, uh, are finely tuned to give you a good amount of leverage uh, with minimal movement. Gamers will notice the performance boost right out of the box. Yeah, I, I do think this actually looks like a pretty pretty good D-pad. Um, I haven't really seen a D-pad like this, so uh, I'll be curious to see how that feels. Um, one thing, my my biggest criticism of the Xbox uh, controller, the Xbox One. Um, is the same criticism I had for the PlayStation 3. The analog sticks are too loose. I hate it. They're way too loose. There's not enough resistance to them. Um, they just feel like they go it's everywhere, and I, I fucking can't stand it. So I'm hoping this controller will have um, stiffer sticks. Whoa, I'm not trying to save this. And those uh, those triggers look different too. That's interesting. And they got um, they're like ribbed for your pleasure. 
Uh, how important was compatibility and connectivity in your design? Both are critical for gaming experiences right now. Gamers want to play games on all their devices. That includes the ability to play classic games and the latest AAA titles on phone through xCloud. The new controller needs to work equally well on Xbox One and pairing and moving between all these devices needs to be easy. This level of compatibility and comp connectivity has become the norm for devices and accessories. Incre increasingly, the controller will be common touch point to your Xbox games across devices it's the one consistent piece of hardware and all these interconnected experiences so we designed it to work that way very cool what steps did you take to ensure compatibility and improved connectivity i i'm sure it connects just fucking fine um although i am reading this here let's see first we're supporting cross compatibility between xbox series x and xbox one consoles and controllers they all work together with the same great xbox uh, wireless radio gamers can also play on more devices, including PC, Android, and iOS. We're implementing Bluetooth low energy uh, so that pairing to these devices is much easier. The new controller also remembers multiple devices, so switching between them is more seamless. And USB-C port allows gamers to play and charge with modern cables that's more readily available. Okay, this is the big thing I wanted to know about um, was... was if it's USB-C or not. Another area in which gamers are always looking for connectivity improvement is reducing latency, uh, blah, blah, blah. The result, we have uh, we shave off precious milliseconds. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And all these improvements work in the background and are fairly uh, invisible. We also wanted to maintain back compatibility with accessories people already have in their collection since those are physical connections. That defines the shape of the lower half of the controller as well as the location of the audio and accessory ports. Ultimately, that means you can plug in your chat pad or headset on day one and it still works. So uh, stuff you've purchased in the past will work on this, which is cool because I know a lot of the um, arguments I see on Twitter when people are fighting is people appreciate that they are still allowed to use a lot of the peripherals they have bought for their prior console, the, the last Xbox, um, and use it on here like they did before as well. So um, for people who do want to bring their stuff over, um, it makes complete sense and it's good for them to have that. Why did you decide to add a share button? I think that's a fantastic thing to add to your controller, so that should be enough. Uh, gaming is an important way people connect with each other. It's often how friends... Shouldn't this... This is the share button, I'm assuming, yeah? Shouldn't that be down here? Capturing and sharing epic or meme-worthy moments are part of the experience and should be uh, quick and unobtrusive as possible. Adding a share button is the best way to make capturing and sharing uh, instantaneous. It's easy to just grab a screenshot or record a video without needing on-screen menus. Then you easily access uh, share content with your favorite social platforms or directly with friends. Uh, the controller has some new textures and finishes. You can tell us a bit about or more about this. And uh, we added a tactile dot pattern on triggers and bumpers, which provides grip to improve feel and performance during gameplay. That's something we've had on special edition controllers, and fans love it. Now it's the new standard. That's good to hear. Uh, a similar and yet more subtle pattern is on the grips. The D-pad bumpers and triggers now have a matte finish to maintain a smooth, consistent feel uh, while your hands are wet or dry. Because I'm fucking... I'm a juicy boy playing these fucking games. I need that goddamn um, matte finish. Thanks to Ryan for taking time to speak with us. One thing I want to say uh, for all the people who are arguing about uh, they just copied this controller and they just copied that controller. Share button's on PS4 and it's an awesome fucking button that I use a lot. I love it. Xbox having a share button is an awesome feature that I think every fucking controller should have and I love it. That's my fucking opinion on it. Um... People are so busy going, well, they did it first, they did it first. Well, somebody made a fucking plastic controller a long time ago. They decided to put buttons on that fucking thing with analogs and a D-pad. Everybody copied that. So get over it. These are good things. Anyway. Um, all in all... Um, and we're going to talk about the PS4 controller later today, but uh, or PS5 controller. We can talk about the PS4 one too. I don't give a fuck. I like that Xbox. I'm 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 surprised. I'm not surprised, right? There's there's small subtle things to something that I you know if it's not broke, don't don't fix it. 
Uh, the Xbox One controller is awesome. This seems to be an evolution of that. They've done small tweaks to this that I think will benefit. Uh, I think that D-pad looks a lot better. I hope those analog sticks feel better. That's my own preference, I know. The share button is welcome. I think every console nowadays needs a share button. It's fucking awesome to be able to do that real quick. Um, the triggers and the bumpers look really good. And, uh, you know, they didn't have to change the thing up too much. And like they said, this will work on everything and the old controllers will work on everything. So they're really just going for like, play how you want to play. And I really dig that. And I think, uh, I think it's the safe move. I think uh, that slight evolution is, uh, is a safe move. So, um, you know, how will it affect, uh, gameplay? You can share now and you got that D-pad that's going to feel better. So um, I think they've made really cool, slight improvements to this thing that uh, I think will benefit everybody. So um, I'm not going to touch on the battery thing. I, I just, whoo, fuck, I'm not getting into that shit. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Don't, don't fucking yell at me. Holy shit. Uh, all in all, though, controller cool. Everything coming out for Xbox is cool. Can't wait to see more on the Xbox Series X. But let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this uh, inside Xbox. Are you guys excited for all the stuff? Uh, what's your favorite thing you saw on inside Xbox April 2020 live show? Um, what are you least excited about? Uh, what do you think about the controller? Are you uh, stoked that they're kind of keeping it the same while evolving it slightly, making it better in a lot of ways? Um, would you like something different, new, crazy uh, that most people don't do? Sony seems to be doing that, though, this year, which is fucking new because they're, they're typically played safe as well. Um and yeah, let me know everything you're thinking about when it comes to Xbox, Xbox Series X in the comments below. But that's going to do it for this tasty bit. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And stay tuned. I got another episode coming out today. And we got another episode coming out tomorrow, I think. And the day after that. And then we got Tasty Cast. And I am fucking flirting with the idea of doing another quarantine stream this weekend. Uh, I kind of want to do more Jackbox already. I thought I, I thought it was fun. I had a blast hanging out with everybody. And right now, shit's kind of shitty for most people. So I thought it was kind of a... A cool thing to get everyone together and just uh, celebrate that we're all sitting at home. So uh, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in doing another Jackbox uh, quarantine stream this weekend. And uh, if, if enough people are interested, I'll uh, I'll throw out uh, a time for everybody to uh, come hang out. But uh, but yeah, my name's Seth. Until the next episode, which is going to be very soon. Have a good one, guys, and take it easy.